we're gonna tell us our, your life story, but the points we cover is what made your life awesome, made you happy. First thing, <laughs> okay. your love to your husband, his yeah. love to you, so love. And the second thing, the community, being here in Santa Barbara and being part of the women's club, having all those friends and their love. And um, also working out <laughs> since 47, okay? When you go you, to bed, you told me, you forget everything. That's one good thing I sleep. When I go to sleep, everything's gone. I mean, I, I don't agonize over things before I go to sleep. Well, I'm Eileen Piatic. My name, maiden name was Eileen Coaches, and I was born in Farrell, Pennsylvania, a small town of about 4,000 people in western Pennsylvania. I grew up, went to high, grade school, high school, and then I, uh, the war came on and I got a job. I was dating a man from my hometown and he went away to college and he brought his roommate home for a weekend and I, that's how I met my husband. <laughs> and I fell for him immediately. When I came home, my mother said I told her I was going to marry him, and I don't remember saying that. He never saw him again until he graduated, and then he happened to come to my town with his roommate. to get. They got a job together in the same company, and uh, I, he asked me for a date, and one thing led to another, and we were married in 1943. He was from Cleveland, Ohio. His name was Rudy Poetic. <laughs> yeah. He joined the Navy because he didn't want to be drafted. He wanted a clean bed and good food, <laughs> so he joined the Navy. I worked at the at the naval station where he was stationed, and uh, and when we got he got discharged, we took a three month trip around all over from the west coast to the east coast. Season was over in April. We went home. My husband drew plans, and we bought a lot, and we had our house built across from a golf course. And of course, he was a golfer and I took up golfing. <laughs> First my son in 1947 and my daughter in 1951. So our children had to start school in New Jersey. And we stayed there until Thanksgiving and then we moved to Maryland and uh, the plant was open and in Hagerstown, Maryland for four years. He was 45 years old and he came home one day and he said, what would you say if I quit? And we went where we wanted to go, not where they sent us. And he said, and uh, they want to buy me and I'm not for sale. He, he was a, a family man, he wanted to be with us. So I said, okay. And so he did research in the library and he picked Santa Barbara. This was a brand new track and we came out here and every house was empty and the man that was the, at the sales office gave us the master key and he said, pick anyone you want, they're all empty. So we just looked around and we picked this house and that was 53 years ago. <laughs> Over the years I joined a lot of organizations to begin with mostly to meet people because we didn't, we had never been here. And, uh, I go in everything with both feet and I became president about everything I joined. <laughs> and then I, in 1978, I joined the Santa Barbara Women's Club by invitation and that was the best thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> and I, I, I met so many friends that I still have today and I was president in 1985 and until 1987 and uh, so I belonged for 40 years now. When I first joined the Republican Club, he was governor and I met him the first time. We went to San Francisco to the woman, Republican Women's Convention and he was a speaker there and I met him. He, he was wonderful and uh, then um, um, he finished his term. Uh, I got invited because I was the president of the club, and so that's how I got to go to uh, all those things. And he was so friendly and so just such a nice person that when 
uh, my husband, he, he was finishing up being president and he was looking for a house. So my husband wrote a letter to him because he heard that he was looking for a place. And the phone rang one day. My husband was out in the garage doing something. And I answered the phone. And so I, when he had his office here at the house, he wanted me to answer the phone because I could ask who's calling. If, and he would get a, the name of a client. Where if he answered, it was awkward. So I always answered the phone. And so I said, can I ask who's calling? He said, this is Ron Reagan. <laughs> I almost dropped the phone. I and I'm happy with Santa Barbara and I'm happy where I live and I, I love to garden and when I'm out in my garden I look up at the blue sky and I say, honey, if you had to leave me anywhere, I'm glad you left me here because I love it here. And he was the love of my life and he's been gone. He died in 2001 and I miss him every day. But I have a wonderful family. I have two wonderful children two great in-laws, I mean my daughter-in-law, my son-in-law, and seven great grandchildren. <laughs> when my son was born, uh, to lose my belly, <laughs> I started exercising with Margaret Firth out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. She was on ADKA a TV. The TV was just coming in at that time. And I exercised with her, and then uh, different ones came on, and then Jack Lane came on, and I exercised with him. And I get up in the morning, and I brush my teeth, and I put on my foot, and I never leave my bedroom. I start with my aerobics, and then when I get done with the aerobics, I both do stand up and on the floor. And then I, I uh, work with my pulley, necks and uh, with my legs and, my, and then I do the step thing I do with one leg and the other leg and then straddle it and I do 40 times on each side and 40 times straddling and then I do my rolling, rolling rowing machine and I like that the best because you you use every part of your body on that and I do that for 15 minutes and then I shut the TV off and ride my bicycle at least a half an hour, but if I'm reading a good story, <laughs> because I have no time restraints, I can do with it. And my son always says, Mom, don't you ever think you don't want to do it? I said, I don't even think. It's just part of my routine. I just, I just do it, that's all. Saturday and Sunday, I, I don't exercise on Saturday and Sunday, just five days a week. Sometimes I, I uh, if uh, I, you know, don't have anything to do, I'll get my book and rather than just sit on the sofa reading, I'll ride my bicycle. But I'm from the old school. <laughs> when I was growing up, you never even went shopping unless you wore gloves and a hat. We were the best dressed kids in school and and we took that through us and we were all shoe crazy. Even when I moved out here, I had a favorite shoe store. I've always been shoe crazy. I, invariably, two or three people will say, look, I wore high heels because of you. <laughs> but they'll say, but we're not leaving them on that long. As soon as I get home, I'm taking them off. I said, well, mine don't, don't hurt. I can leave them on. Women didn't have careers or anything. They were expected to get married and raise a family and stuff. And so anyhow, uh, she never worked. Everything was rationed and I mean, there were a lot of hardships. Help from the government when the depression was on you were lucky. Everything we did, we worked for. I mean, you, you didn't, we didn't have a refrigerator. We didn't have automatic washer. Lots of times we'd just go in the garden and pull a tomato or a carrot and rub the dirt off and eat it. I mean, it was it was a different time. I mean, nobody was saying, oh, this is dangerous, you're gonna catch this. Or so. I mean, you live, you just lived. I don't know what hit my head to think that my driver's license was gonna be up, so I went out to the DMV and I took my, t I didn't study or anything. I just, and I told the man uh, something about 
I didn't get a notice or something. He said, do you want to take the test? I said, well, I'm here. And I passed my test. <laughs> I didn't even study or anything. And I got my driver's license for five years. So, so when I'm close to 100, my driver's license will be, if I'm still here. <laughs> But I'm very restricted. My son doesn't allow me to go on the freeway. And <laughs> he said, it's not you, Mom, it's the other people. He said, I, I, I don't trust, you know. It's, uh, and I still feel that I'm capable, but I, I figure if I do it and something happens, he'll never, I'll never live it down. Because they said, I told you to stay off the freeway. I love my home, and I love my garden, and I, I love all my friends, and I love Eva. <laughs> I love you. I don't really take offense, and I don't hold a grudge. I just, uh, yeah, life is too short. I eat everything bad for me. <laughs> I eat what I want, and, and uh, my doctor says keep doing it. It's not hurting you, so. I'm out living all my doctors. They retire. And I have to get a new, I have four different doctors since I've been in Santa Barbara and never one of them because I didn't like them. They retired and I had to get another one. I don't take any pills. What do you do when you have pain? And I said, I just work through it. It's all original. <laughs> and so he said, well, it's obvious you found the fountain of youth. <laughs> and I started to laugh. I'm blessed, that's all I Something's looking after me. I have so many good friends and, and I'm 95 years old. <laughs>